Hello and welcome to episode 5 in our JRPG tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be working on our camera system for our turns. So the idea behind this is that when we go into our turn of each individual character, the camera will change to a location that spins around them, highlighting that this character is the one that you're picking for. The options will show, allowing you to pick whatever you like and carry on the turn. So let's get started on working on this new camera system. So we're going to set up the camera system now, so we've got more dynamic camera angles. Um, I'm going to go and create a new blueprint class and choose actor and this will be the uh, dynamic camera. Oh, misspelled it. Let's get that right. There we go. And in here we're going to have a spring arm. Attach that spring arm will be a camera. We're also going to have a rotating movement component on there. So we've got a, more of a nice spinning camera movement around the whole entire thing. So with the rotating camera here, I'm going to change the speed of the rotation rate here from 180 to 10. So it's a lot slower, otherwise we'll throw up and hit compile. Okay, so let's set up the camera system here. So first of all, what I'm going to do is change the spring arm here to be 500 in width, in its length. And I'm just going to angle it up as well a little bit too. Out there maybe. Um, and hit compile now and we want it to also ignore collision tests as well there you go okay so when you simulate this the camera will spin around so if I've done uh, simulation goes so we am turn that off so that will be doing that we're gonna hit save on there and go to the event graph on this so for the event graph on this, we need to set up a system for us to easily change the camera location and position uh, throughout the game. So what I'm going to do is going to make an interface for my camera system. So I'm going to make a new uh, blueprint section and go to blueprint interface. And we'll call this one dynamic uh, camera interface. And in here, we're going to set up a couple of functions. So the first one we're going to do is set location. And we'll do set camera location. We'll do. Oh no no, we'll do uh, set dynamic location. There we go. And this will have two inputs. One will be the uh, actor, the target actor, and that'll be an actor reference. And the other one will be a location, a vector. And that'll be a vector type. And hit compile. Um, and we're going to also turn on a function here for set orbit. And it's going to have one input on it. And that's going to be a boolean. And we'll call it is orbiting. I'll and save that. Okay, so back on our dynamic camera here, we're going to go, go class settings and tell it to implement that interface. There it is, dynamic camera interface. Oh, so let's just clear this stuff. And here we have set orbit and set dynamic location. Set orbit, probably easy one to set up. We right click on this, implement that event. And on here, we're simply going to be using this to change the rotation rate of our thing. So we're going to take the rotating movement and we're going to set rotation rate and this is going to be a select rotator and that is orbiting will go into there so if it's true we're going to set our orbit rate here and the z to be 10 it's false if we set to zero in other words stopping it okay and next we want it to um tell when we are in like our orbiting we're going to tell our spring arm to actually follow and use the same your input for this. Otherwise, the spring arm won't turn with it. So we want to turn that off sometimes and then turn it on when we want to orbit. So I'm going to turn it off by default and then I'm going to drag out my spring arm and tell it then to set inherit your. And this can be true or false based on this orbiting. I'm going to drag is orbiting to that. 
So when the camera's spinning around, I want it to follow the yaw that's been given, so it will spin. Otherwise, I want it to ignore the yaw and just stay locked into position, basically. Um, and duh, 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 duh. I think that's it. Uh, we'll hit compile and save that. And yeah. Oh, the other thing we want to do as well is reset its rotation. So when we do turn it off, it doesn't stay where we turned it off. So from there, we'll just do set rotation. And we'll find set actor rotation. And we'll leave that at zero, zero, zero. So it returns it back to its normal rotation. Um, okay, that will do for that. Next, we're going to do is the uh, set location. <coughs> So right click on set dynamic location and implement that event. And this will determine what we're going to do here. So if we give it an actor, we want it to target the actor one. If we give it a location and not an actor, we want it to choose the location instead. But the actor will take precedence. So we're going to take the actor out here and do is valid. And plug that in. And if it is valid, we're going to attach it, this camera, to the actor. So attach actor to actor. And let's just move this down a bit. And the actor here will be parent actor. Okay. And for this, I'm going to snap the location. So snap the target. So it goes straight to that target. Uh, but I'm going to keep the rotation rule and scale rule to be keep world. I don't want it to be affected by that of the target. Um, okay. Next, I want to set the relative rotation of the camera to be zero zero, so it faces the the uh, the target correctly. So if we do any sort of tweaks and changes to the rotation of the camera, this will reset that. So if I do set relative rotation, plug that in, oh, and save that. If it's false and it's not valid, basically, we want it to do um, to set the target location of this. So we're going to set target. Uh, sorry, let's make a variable first. Whoops, my bad. New variable, and this will be target location. We're going to make it smoothly go over to it. So we go to here, vector, drag that out and do set. Plug that into it. it's not valid and plug the vector into that. Compile and save that. Cool. Right, so next we need to go into our tick event. So on the tick event, we need to check whether or not we actually are attached to an actor. And if we're not, I'm going to tell it to uh, smoothly move to that location. Okay, so we're going to get the uh, attach parent actor and check if that's valid. Okay, and if we're not valid, i.e. not attached to anything, I'm going to take to smoothly transition to this target location. So I'm going to get this, and I'm going to reinterp to, and that will be the target. So move that to target. The current will be actor location, and delta time will be delta world seconds, and the speed we'll put as five. And then the return value here, we're going to do uh, set actor location. And I'll go to is not valid there. Okay, so it's either going to teleport itself to the character and set it to the character location, or it's going to smoothly move to a position. Compile and save that. So next, I want to put this into the world. So we'll just drag that in. Doesn't really matter where you put it, because it will be changing. Um, one thing to note as well, uh, we don't have to turn collision off, so that's totally fine. Um, okay, so we now need to be able to set that camera up to be used when we start the turn. So on our combat component, on the start unit turn, we want it to change to that camera. So I'm going to make another function on here, and we're going to do set camera. And on set camera, we're going to have uh, very simply the get actor. From, of class 
and choose the dynamic camera and we're going then to set the view target of the player controller which I forgot to get player controller and we're going to set the view target of that and plug that in like so and the new view target will be the camera and there we go so next we want to tell it to uh, set the locations and, and so forth so we're going to drag from that return value from the cap the actor of class and we're going to call that interface message so set uh, dynamic location and you want message plug that in and the target of this the actor of this will be the unit character so it should now teleport to that location there and I also want to turn on the orbiting of this too so for this I'm going to simply get the player controller get their view target which would be the camera basically and I'm going to tell it to set orbit with the message again and tell it to be true and hit compile go back to the uh, start unit turn and drag in the set camera okay so let's now test that out so push play and when greystone's bar is filled up the camera now changes to him and now give this nice rotation whilst it's waiting for me to give it a command to either attack do magic or techniques or items now because we're testing this out properly we can see that these text is quite hard to read on this background because the floor is quite light the text is quite light etc so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the background color to be a lot darker Let's go into my widget UI for this. And that would be action commands. And we're going to add a wrap with border. And this border here, we're going to change the color of brush color to black and change this to 0 0.4. File and save that. So now let's test that out and see how that appears. There you go, that's a bit better. We can actually read the text now. That was a little bit clearer. Perfect. Okay, uh, that'll do here. So the camera will now transition to whoever's turn it is currently on. Um, what we'll also do is when they go to attack, we'll change the camera again to give a bit more dynamic camera feel and look whilst they're in attack mode. That brings us to the end of this episode. We now have a nice camera to switch to when we go into turns. And this is a great way to communicate to the player whose turn is actually next. In the next episode, we're going to work on the next little menu, which is the select target menu. So that when you choose, say, attack, you can then choose which enemy you want to attack from a list. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. Massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for your continued support. If you want to watch all my videos before anyone else, head on to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, where a donation of just $1 gets you access to all my video content before anyone else. Thanks for watching, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.